You're live. Yay. Good morning. Welcome to Coffee Talk. We're here with TJ. 827 this morning. TJ's here. Hi. Whoa, we're early today. Nice and early. Nice, nice. and early. So, TJ, you are Hi. the production manager. Yes. But I would also call you the... What would I call you? You're friend. like the human... Ro- yes, friend. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Clean. <laughs> you are, yes. Clean everything. You do have hair, though, so... <laughs> Mr. True. Clean is, I think, bald, right? Is that... Mm. He's on the he's magic bald. eraser, Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll go bald eventually. <laughs> My hair is already thinning. Really? <laughs> yeah. It happens to all of us, man. That's okay. Yeah. My dad's poor hairline. <laughs> His jeans. Does it start here or in the back? It's more in the front. Okay. Like this. I feel like the worst way to lose your hair is this one. Because you can't tell for a while. And yeah. then eventually it either takes like a, a picture where you're like, whoa, like, I haven't seen myself. I didn't even see that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you do. So on the weekends, people can find you either ninja'd away which means they won't see you because you're backstage I'm or wearing all black yeah you're the one who like brings out the Behind microphone the when something's broken or you're the one who hands out a guitar and all you see is the hand and you're like whoa where did that guy come from what who is that <laughs> yes. who is that guy so do they you... pay him <laughs> <laughs> no he just volunteer he lives here <laughs> i love him um, so you do on the weekends basically anything that has to do with production tech fixing things that break when there's so that you make things run smoothly. I try you, to. <laughs> you, when you're not here, that's usually when things break, and then you just see many people panicking and running around. <laughs> so that's your. You bring the uh, the high quality and the peace of mind on the weekend. We know when TJ's there, we're gonna be good. Peace of mind is what I try to strive for. So that's my middle name, good, TJ. You. Peace of mind. I like come in early. I'm just like check every converter yeah. <laughs> well because here's the weird thing people may not know this just because it's set up one time does not mean that every weekend it's exactly the same sometimes you can come in and there's just like wires unplugged that yeah. like it's like down underneath something that people shouldn't really be into so we have this theory that there's either like a sun coast rat or something that just goes around and like wall man yeah just <laughs> unplug things and they don't do away. anything they just unplug things like you said. yeah Mm. It's weird. Oh. Um, so, oh. I just on. unplugged my head, though. <laughs> okay. Take your time. I ran under the cable. <laughs> can you guys hear, can you hear in your headphones the rain right now? A little bit, but not okay. too bad. So this is Florida. This is what happens. We get some sprinklings. Well, we're coming into season for it, too, where it's mm-hmm. just going to be, we're going to have a little background noise. Yeah. I like it. It's, it's almost like soothing. ASMR. Yes. Yeah. Very soothing. Just a little bit. So, so that's on the weekend. That's what you do. So, and then when Caleb who usually directs is not there like this last weekend you direct yes which means you are i like to call it like the pilot seat where you're like sitting behind all the controls In the cockpit. yes i wish that the seat up there was like <laughs> like i wish that it moved like <laughs> it moved with the cameras yes. That'd be so whatever cool. you have in preview just moves around them. yeah so. that would be really fun <laughs> so basically if you if people haven't been up to the production room it's very exciting it's pretty cool but you basically have five cameras to deal with mm. and um you also hooked up those cameras i think you did you like build or rebuild the rails down on the front uh kind of rebuild i like redid the rails and like repainted it and cleaned it off stuff like That's that really i cool. rebuild all that stuff he rebuilds and repaints things all the time. All the time. Like the stage just <laughs> recently got a new coat of like a slightly more shiny, shiny, yeah, shiny black paint. But here's what's crazy is that your speed in painting is ridiculous. <laughs> You'll be like, I'm going to paint it today. And back in the day when I was an intern, I remember we'd be like, we're going to paint. And it would be like the 10, biggest process. 10 people like <laughs> just rolling forever. <laughs> so, painting is definitely a skill. And I definitely did that too much of my old jobs <laughs> so you but you do have like an, a professional background in painting yeah. so how long did you do that for i did it for my whole life really <laughs> yeah because my father owns his own painting business mm-hmm. and so that was like oh you want some money to use <laughs> and be a human yeah. <laughs> and hang out with your friends you got to work with me i'm like yeah. okay that makes sense so i learned how to paint and then i worked for him when i got older for a little bit when I ha- was like in between jobs, and then I worked for a company called Waltech, which Wall-Tech. is basically yeah. like a really big paint company that paints like all the big corporations around here, like Sarasota Memorial and stuff what? like that. Yeah. Whoa. So I literally was just like stationed there because they l- just have constant construction yeah. all the time. So I was just working there. Mo- wow. The majority of the time. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. So you were just your job was just to paint 
the hospital basically, basically. just all the because time because they had just sections of it that they had to like section this off and like cover it off because they can't have the smell mm. anywhere so it was like this weird like double layered like negative air zones or whatever what? yeah you like go in your ears pop what yeah you're like what is that happening it's how do you weird. make that is it it's like, like, like a- literally just big ac units that are like i have no idea how they work that's crazy yeah it's pretty cool it was it was interesting but yeah it was like really cold all the time because of like keeping everything sterile yeah it was like freezing and then there was a few times that were just like really gross but really? i sh- probably shouldn't say that but like like hospital fine. gross things yeah Ooh, but it's like know. walls I'm curious and mold oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so maybe not the hospital to <laughs> yeah. know but i mean if you guys came in to redo stuff oh yeah 100 percent. we yeah yeah so you got everything's great <laughs> <laughs> everything's good we're not saying anything back. but you guys recently painted our offices the creative mm-hmm. house it looks so good and so it was you and your brother timmy mm-hmm. and you guys okay again i think the entire creative team at one point tried to paint that house and it took us like an entire week of just like we'd come in okay someone paint this wall and it'd be like i need help and we just paint but then we watch you guys and we're just like we're like wait are you done you're like yep just move on to the next one we're like how do you so how just do you practice. learn so it's just it's a skill that the more you do yeah the faster you can go 100 percent. it's just like a skill like any other thing like you learn how to plumb you learn how to paint like it just you get good at it eventually and it's like the whole time it's the whole main point is just get paint like spread it like throw it on the wall and then spread it don't like try to clean it off like just a little dry and like put it on there just slap it on the wall yeah (laughs) don't make those noises (laughs) so sorry no it's okay (laughs) um so you do you you have background in painting Mm -hmm. and then take me back through what you did before you got here because i think you were one of the because there's a pretty young group of creative people i feel like you're the one with the most job experience i think (laughs) i think like other job experience yeah yeah i worked a lot of jobs before i worked here and i would just literally jump around a lot like every two years i would get a new job because i started working when i was like 14 Mm -hmm. and then just been working since then Mm -hmm. i first worked at a company or a restaurant at a hotel which was like called blue island bistro and it was basically like a high-end restaurant for older people that was it and so softer <laughs> yeah no <laughs> just applesauce a lot of prunes and, yeah, that's no, all yeah. but it, it was it was actually great because it was good experience to communicate with others and like stand up straight present yourself in a way that like you don't normally present yourself and i got really good tips and they encouraged you to talk to the people like stop what you're doing and just talk to them like mm. have a conversation there was a few times where I'd just have conversations with old people for like an hour, <laughs> just like sitting there on the clock, just talking to them, like yeah. cleaning off their table or whatever. And there was a few times where I'd got like $200 tips because they were just like, whoa, hey, here you go. I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Good. Yeah. yeah. It was not bad. Yeah, I got paid pretty good there. Nice. They paid me under the table in okay. the beginning, but, <laughs> and then they found out that it was techie and then they started using me for other things. Yeah. <laughs> they were like hey, our system needs to be updated. Um, can you do that? I'm like, I can look at it. <laughs> it's like so easy just really? to update it. Yeah. Like update their whole server, their printers, like they got new things. And I just kept doing that. Was that your was first doing. taste in doing that professionally? A little bit. Yeah. So how did they find out you were techie? Like what were you doing? In My your- friend, Nathan, who basically got me the job, he worked there before and I was like best friends with him. And he was basically like, hey, this guy is a good worker. He's good somewhat work ethic even though it's his first job (laughs) (laughs) but uh he was like he's pretty techie it's like he knew me first from games and like building computers and stuff like that just for fun okay so your personal life was more like entertainment driven for tech but i feel like that either you have to have a natural like draw to that stuff or do you feel like you learned it through your interest in games like Uh, how did you get interested in I definitely got it through the interest of games. Okay. Like, I don't know why that's, like, a huge thing everyone goes through. Yeah. Like, a lot of people who enjoy working with technology started with somewhat playing games nowadays. Yeah. Not all the time, obviously. But it was just like, oh, computers, because that was the whole thing, PC gaming, mm-hmm. and getting into that kind of thing. 
and I just started building them with my brother and we just started like oh this is really easy yeah oh wow this is easier than I thought that was kind of I feel like when you have a brain for that though like most other people like even me I'm just like is it possible to have this on this tv you're like (laughs) yeah I'm like like blown away like how did you even know I that? like thinking <laughs> through those processes too yeah I'm like oh I like knowing how it works and right. then putting it together I've always been kind of like that which is nice are you mechanically driven as well so a car if you were to fix a car you would know kind of what my, to do on it my dad taught me a lot of things when I was younger like okay. just random stuff and always just be outside fixing a car like the first car I ever had was I like actually that you throw that in quotes <laughs> <laughs> fixing <laughs> well we did f- literally build a whole front end of a car by ourselves Whoa. that was the first thing that i ever did and it was because my first car was a honda prelude and mm-hmm. i actually bought from a guy who went to this church and mm-hmm. it was great it was my favorite car it was so fast and i remember you driving that around like, here. yeah so quick um it was fun and but you built that whole thing well, first, I got in a car accident. Oh, that one all makes Step sense. Step one. <laughs> well, I didn't get in a car accident. Well, I did, but <laughs> I wasn't the one at fault, but I was the mm. one who hit him, but he's the one who pulled out in front of me in the last second, mm. but still. Yeah. And at least I had my mom in the car, who was the first time she ever rode with me in a car, and then we'd get in an accident no. right away. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was definitely not fun it was like the first time i was like oh gosh like i'm not ready for this i was angry too because i just got the car i was like i got it probably like two weeks ago and i got in a car accident i'm like just like freaking out and this dude someone pulling out in front of you yeah i was just going like there was like no traffic and this guy literally just pulled across this whole like (gasps) through the median and just pulled out right in front of me and i couldn't stop fast enough i'm like it sounds like clark road no, it was in no? Venice. Okay. <laughs> it was literally like right on the island. Uh oh. So but Venice does that mean it was an elderly gentleman? <laughs> Actually, no. He was like, well, kind of a not elderly. He was like forty. Okay. 50. <laughs> yeah. All the viewers are like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wasn't elderly. <laughs> Did he just not see you? Like. No, I. He was like, oh, I didn't see you. Like because that was just a small black yeah. car. But it was like daytime. It wasn't night. So whatever. Man, just that, blind. that kind of stuff is, especially when it's a car that you have an emotional attachment to. Cause I you're love like, this that is thing. Mine. That yeah. was so, it was like my first car. It was so nice feeling. It was old. It was a 98 prelude, nice. but it was like perfect condition felt yeah. like, and it was fun. So Had you, really good gas mileage. Yeah. So you smash that up and then you're like, I can't get rid of this. We're going to build it back. Well, they totaled my car. Oh, they did. And then I just kept it. Yeah. Because you can sometimes, depending. Yeah, you like pay them back a certain amount or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And um, I just kept it and I was like, okay, well, I guess I can fix it. And so me and my father just literally went to the junkyard every day and like looked for parts just all the time. And we found the same prelude with like the perfect hood and like the same body and we just took it apart That's and then amazing. bought it and then just replaced it. TJ, you know, I've pr- totaled a prelude too. What? Yeah. Oh yeah. Is that when you It was my second car. <laughs> so we're Wait, the same person. This I is know. <laughs> it's weird. Parallel lives. <laughs> is this is the prelude the one that you hit the hog? Yes. You've heard that story, right? Yeah, I've heard yeah, that story from both it's unavo- a legend. Both gets- unavoidable <laughs> accidents. It's crazy. Yeah. Th- that one was preludes. Came around the corner. This one right here that's like near Suncoast. Yeah. And there was a massive hog in the road already and a truck had hit. It, I think it was already hit, hit it into his lane further, really? right as he was coming around the corner. The most ironic thing, so you were with your mom, and this was the first time she had driven with you. Parallel universe right here I know. already. Larry had just pulled off on the side of the road and was walking out with his flashlight to look at the hog when mm-hmm. he saw Ryan hit it and go into the ditch. <laughs> yeah, he was like, crazy. He's like so 30 weird. feet away from me when I... And he, so, so Ryan weird. like goes into the ditch, airbag goes off, and he's like, his face is burning, and all he hears is like, knock, 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 Ryan, you okay? And he's like, Daddy? <laughs> How are you here? <laughs> it's crazy. Are you watching? Yeah, it's crazy. That was crazy. Ooh. It was terrifying. The yeah. guy was perfectly like fine. He was like, oh, whenever it happens, I'm like, <laughs> you're like, not to me. No. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I've. Uh, I don't think is this real wood. I've never been in one before. 
I'm gonna knock on that right now. That is real wood. That's yeah. yeah. Okay. Protect I, uh, that Civic out there. Yeah, I know, right? Oh. Yeah. Especially in Florida, where you just get you get like tourists, you get young kids, and you get old it's people. There's crazy. hazards everywhere. A lot of crazy drivers out there. Whew. Don't don't make me just go. Just don't off drive. On crazy drivers. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you had a job at a restaurant. Yes. Slash hotel was it you said a hotel it was like the hotel was here but it was a separate building but it was okay. connected to okay. it kind of thing so so guests staying there can go there yeah, okay exactly. so then where'd you move on after that after that i started working with my father for a while and then after that i worked for mcdonald's okay <laughs> this is impressive though how old were you i started working at mcdonald's at 16 16 and then you eventually was it like a really fast promotion it was you get promoted in different sections so you just become a crew member in the beginning which just every average mcdonald's worker is just minimum wage mm-hmm. and then you go from that to a uh, a crew trainer which you get like ten dollars an hour or something like that and then after that you become a shift manager which is basically just sh- owning the shift like there's always one manager mm-hmm. at the time and you can be that one person but mm-hmm. you have to have your serve save which serve is like save? the a certification allowing you to manage a restaurant and you have Ooh. to have that so they actually like sh- like sent me off to like uh up north florida or something like that in tallahassee and i like stayed there and did all the courses and stuff Ooh. became a shift manager and then worked that for like three months and then i became a uh um a department manager which Whoa. is basically you are uh, in charge of a section of the of the store which i was doing inventory mm-hmm. so basically like i had to make sure everything was shipped on time to the store so we always had product and stuff like that and then after that i became a store manager which like controls the whole store which basically all i did was like make sure the the, the department heads just did what they did right. that's all i basically did it right. wasn't it was actually easier to be a store manager yeah. than. <laughs> so you were managing people as like a teenager. Mm. It That's... was weird because every time there would be like a rush, people would get mad. I've had really? I've had some crazy stories working there too, and it's, it's from customers. From customers, from like I've had car accidents in the drive-through. <laughs> I've had what? people come in like armed guards and take this person out of the store and disinfect like a whole section of the store what? i'll tell you in a second but like <laughs> it, it it was i had a lot of crazy stories i would come home like almost stressed out like out of my mind yeah like, with people just crazy like people little, are crazy. little do people know mcdonald's has some wild <sighs> stories <laughs> It's just a volume game, man. It's statistics. <laughs> yeah. Once you get to that amount of people coming through a place, yeah. you're inevitably going to deal with some crazy stuff. And yeah. we had a crazy busy store. Like um, in Venice, there's a guy who owns all the McDonald's. Ooh. It's not like a corporation. It's just a guy who's like, oh, yeah, I'll buy them. And yeah. he has like a little office or whatever. And he has like um, like separate from everywhere kind of thing. So he does a lot of different things to bring people in. So mm-hmm. it was like. We had like 300 people going through the drive-through every hour. What? Yeah. So it was literally like just like burger, go, yeah. go, go, like constantly, just like that, for 10 hours straight, like just oh my. That all is the crazy. time. Crazy. And like eventually, you got to the point that you become like stress is a thing, but you get over it. Right. Like this is how it is. Right. But it was definitely hard when I first started. <sighs> Like, I was stressed out all the time. Yeah. It was hard. Especially, especially doing school and stuff, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. I did too much when I was younger. Yeah. But at the same time, it was good for me mentally. And, like, I overcame a lot of obstacles because I what I had a... I wasn't good very well. Talking. Okay. <laughs> Gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a very good, strong, like mental authority in my head kind of mm-hmm. thing. And I just kind of went with the flow with a lot of things and mm-hmm. I overcame a lot of that. So what would you but. say the process was? So you found yourself in a, I'm going to try to say it in my own words. <laughs> so fine. you found yourself in a stressful situation and you had to learn how to handle it so you didn't come in prepared for the stress it was like you were already there and then suddenly you were hit with a swell of stress yeah you just almost you get in this mindset of just like 
push past it. Like this stress, yes, it's a thing right ha- right now, but like it's going to be over. It's going to be fine, and you're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Like in the end, it's going to be fine. And like if you really need to, you can leave. Like you can go in the back. You can walk away. Like you can if you really need to. And there's a few times that I would like. I only argued with a customer once, <laughs> and after that, I was so mad. I yeah. was like, I went in the back and just started punching boxes, and yeah. I was just like, I'm like, I can't physically handle this right now, and I yeah. have to re- like release this anger somehow. Yeah. But I mean, especially stress, and you hear all the time that stress is like a number one. It causes sickness. It causes like aging. Yeah. There's so many things that stress will cause, and because especially America is very like workforce oriented. Like you kind of have to work, which then that means you kind of have to have stress in your life. Yeah. So you also have to learn how to cope with it. So instead of everyone just saying, okay, we're just going to go in the back and punch boxes. (laughs) What are some ways that are like, that's the best way. (laughs) I mean, it sounds like the best way I kind of want to have a big box room and just, it's nice. I mean, it is because they say like working out or doing something physical, especially when, your stress, like that, that's the thing is you can find a line of stress energizing you mm. because you're like wound up or it's just it, the way you look at it. Yeah. Or it can drain you to where you're like, now I don't want to go punch the boxes. And I just want to curl up. Mm-hmm. So it can affect people in so many different ways. What are some things now that you're a little bit older, but okay. I, I want people to have some context. You're not like, how old are you? I'm 23 now. 23. So you've, you've been working since you were 14 mm-hmm. and like big jobs, not just like I was a, cashier at something like yeah no i've little done, things i've done a lot of things right and so you you have work experience but you also have like working with people experience yeah that was like the first time or like working with people in that management position at mcdonald's that was the first time i really had to like push somebody around almost and yeah. delegate things and like i'm not supposed to be doing this but you're supposed to be doing this kind mm-hmm. of thing which is such a weird mentality to have yeah like, it's weird but i got good at it yeah and it teaches you skills that you can take into that's why i think that the management style or the ability to rise in the ranks at mcdonald's is really cool because if you do rise up then eventually you can take whatever you've learned from there mm. and it's good like that's yeah, impressive good. to me to know that at such a young age you rose up like that and you were able to do I, I think when you're younger than people and you're telling them what to do it can create a weird it definitely thing was in your weird head. Yeah. there was a lot of people that were like the night shifts were older so I was like always telling people what to do and they're always like second guessing me but eventually they became like my friends and I kind of like they got better with it but right. it was definitely weird at first like yeah. Older people are like, who are you? Yeah. Are you <laughs> who is this little child over here? So now that you work in here at Suncoast, you basically run your own department. Occasionally, if you're like, I need help with this thing, you'll like bring people over. Mm. But for the most part, you have your own schedule set, like your own tasks and all of that. And you, the thing is, if you have nothing to do, you don't sit idly. Like you put it in our reverse osmosis and like <laughs> painted the whole office and clean it. Like you do these things. So your work ethic is something that you bring to the table. Like we didn't teach you how to be that way. Mm. So for people who maybe are like, Ooh, I want, I want to get better at that. Like I, I want to be someone who's always pushing. You always say, we're always growing. We're always getting better. We're always pushing it. Like you run the production team and you're, you're always reiterating that message. Like let's do better. It is true because you, you push all of us to continuously try to do that. It's in our heads to say, what can we be doing better? Where did that come from? Honestly, I think that just came from me just like wanting things to keep moving. I Mm -hmm. hate when things like even the workflow of just everything, just things being static, like it, I'm like, what's the point? What are we doing here? Why am I here? Like, w- like I don't feel like I'm growing at all. Right. Like, I don't want to be static. Like, I want to keep moving things and trying to come up with a good thought process to change things. Because a lot of things I've been hearing lately from just conversations with people mm-hmm. is like, I don't think I can do more. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think even just like dealing with a parent or like uh, like a relationship, they're like, I don't, I can't do anything. And mm-hmm. I'm like you can do everything yeah you can just change the way you think about it just a little bit and that's doing something at least Mm -hmm. and i feel like even when i'm at work like sometimes i'll be tired or drained and deal with mental issues like everybody else um it's i still try to 
push past it and like okay i feel literally like crap right now mm-hmm. and i need to do something like no matter what even if i'm feeling like crap i should go in the auditorium and go fix something and, or just sit down and be like i don't have any projects right now what can i be doing right now like just write down projects and be like okay well this needs to be improved somewhat and stuff like that so mm-hmm. there's a few projects that i'm working on just in the background that i mm-hmm. haven't started but that's kind of like the thought process as i go through to just always have something that you feel like you're making progress on yeah because it's like i'm 23 like i'm not old i'm not young it's i'm there you, <laughs> correction you are young <laughs> yeah perspective but when you're 23 you definitely feel like i'm not a teenager anymore it's like true. i'm getting older you, yeah. you're getting to somewhat of an adult yeah kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're still learning obviously but it's like i'm at this age I can, I also compare myself, like, I know comparing yourself isn't the best thing to do, but I compare myself to a point to try to improve myself, Mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, if someone else was in my position right now, and, like, why is this, let's just say, church, like, why is this church doing better? Like, is their production guy better? What is that person doing? Like, are they planning things better? They're supposed to be the leader. They're supposed to be the person doing that. And so I just try to picture other people in my position doing that thing and just try to strive to be better and i usually don't Mm -hmm. even pick like a specific person it's Mm -hmm. just like a vague idea Mm -hmm. of like trying to get better Mm -hmm. because then i'm not i mean they say like that that reminds me of the dress for the job that you want not the job that you have but just mentally right in a way because it's it all comes down to (laughs) i mean i always use this car analogy that you can be sitting inside of a prius but or you a can, prelude. You can think, yeah, <laughs> but you can think you're in a Ferrari and it changes the way that you drive because sure. it's just, and I think thoughts have so much power on people. It's everything. Yeah. Thoughts are everything. Like, So what do you do when you're, do you ever feel like your thoughts go out of control or, okay. <laughs> yeah. All the time. So That'll what be, do you do? <laughs> it's sometimes I'm still working on it. There's mm-hmm. still processes that it does overcome me to a point of like, like dealing with depression dealing with anxiety like those things obviously affect everyone to an extent Mm -hmm. and some people have harder time i deal with it a lot and i have to focus on it a lot and try to strive to be better i have to work out and do all these things to somewhat be in a better headspace because Mm -hmm. i know that everything is kind of like how i try to think about is that life doesn't really change and when i'm feeling down it's not like anything's changed it's just my thought process on things and it just puts me in another reality grounds me a little bit Mm -hmm. so i just try to think of that and try to change my thought process Mm -hmm. but i'm still growing and learning and stuff like that because i'm not perfect but yeah this is what it sounds like to me you take responsibility that it's not life outside of you is happening and you're like well i'm just getting pulled along you're like yeah life could things could be thrown at me but it's all about how i respond and what i'm thinking about 100 that is really that is a an idea that is hard for people to understand because what you're doing is you're giving up your victim card you're giving up the ability to say well it's not me it's not my fault and i feel like that's a very mature thing to do but when have you seen that when have you been like yes I'm so glad that I think this way (laughs) like have there been times where you're like I could or maybe you're interacting with other people Mm. and you start to think I'm glad that I think the way that I think I definitely have those moments sometimes but I never think of it like I'm better than other people because sometimes I hate on myself too much Mm. to the point of like I don't give myself enough credit and even Emily was like you don't give yourself enough credit you do a lot and I'm like like oh <laughs> I'm, that's yeah. why she's your girlfriend <laughs> yeah it's true she does help me a lot yeah that's but. and that's okay so let's talk about that what's the importance of someone else in your life understanding you like when very important i mean when you see people in a relationship and you're like especially if it's a friend and you're like i know you because you're my friend mm-hmm. and then it's like some what, sometimes the most aggravating thing when someone doesn't understand your friend but then when someone doesn't understand you it's weird because it's almost like, eh, whatever. But if you, yeah. it's almost like you want to defend your friend because you're like, I know them and they're good. Why is it that when it comes to us and our worth, like as an individual, it's easier to be like, nah, but I don't matter as much. And it takes someone to be like, no, listen, you are good. You do do a lot. I don't know. I feel like people just almost find comfort in hating on things a mm. little bit. And I feel like our first go-to is 
ourselves because it's easier to hate on us than other people in my opinion because mm-hmm. i'm like i don't want to hate on another person like they already have enough problems as is right i don't want to push them down even more and that's a bad word to say yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say something fun, so. yeah <laughs> but it's not good to do that and like it's not okay especially like hurting other people like anyway mentally physically like, mm-hmm. so it's like i feel like that's just where our brain goes because honestly sometimes our thoughts automatically go to that negative thing because our brain is just wired a certain way and it's Mm -hmm. It's almost like a thought habit yeah habits i've definitely realized like that's just our brain just wants to be comfortable and it'll do anything that it can to be comfortable with anything and that will be any thought process even if it's bad for us yeah and that's what i've been trying to learn how to overcome to an extent Mm -hmm. and like even this like I was super anxious to come do this, and I'm like, you're fine, DJ. You talk all the time. Like, yeah. You can be okay, and you have good thought process. Me and Emily will have conversations for hours of just yeah. everything. We'll sit out on the porch and just hang out and, like, talk, and we'll – that's the thing with, like, accountability. It's really good to have that person communicate and, like, understand you in that level because mm-hmm. it's, like, you almost can be both pushing that way, and it's a lot easier to have two people than one. Obviously. Yeah. But – so do you see yourself as a another person as in like do you think about yourself as like i am tj and this is what tj is like sometimes it can get like confusing sometimes i'll have those moments of like i'm just going throughout the day and then i'm like oh yeah i'm right here and this person (laughs) is looking at me i have this physical body yeah and i'll have moments of clarity of like remembering those things Mm -hmm. kind of thing but there's sometimes where i'm not aware of that and i'm focusing my brain will jump around so quickly on different things and i'm just like i can't even handle you right now yeah. <laughs> like yeah like stop this yeah so what are some like podcasts books movies what are the things that you take either inspiration from or that you like are do you find help or something from podcasts and books or is it like other people it's usually honestly for my own thought processes but sometimes like me and emily goes to uf and she has tons of, like psychological classes and she'll talk to me about that and she listened to a lot of podcasts too about that and she'll send it to me and then i'll listen to them and we'll talk about it and stuff like that and that's where i get it a lot nice but at the same time it's more it's like i'm <laughs> like uh just thinking about things or if i'm on reddit and i'll see like there's tons of subreddits like mental health and like it's positive thinking and it's mm-hmm. just things like that like i try to spend at least 20 minutes a day just disconnected from everything where I Mm. try to like put my phone away and then I'll go sit somewhere and then I'll just try to like sit there and I'm like okay brain what are you doing for me today (laughs) kind of mentality it's yeah that's really cool so you sit unplugged untethered sometimes I sit there and I'm like I'm so bored (laughs) I'm like like but I'm like you're not bored sit there yeah relax because it's so weird to I mean I am fully addicted to my phone like that's me too that's something to where it's a habit to just sit as soon as there's a moment of pause Mm -hmm. so like we're watching a movie and we pause to like go to the bathroom or something as soon as there's a moment where I could just sit in silence idly it's like grab the phone automatically and just look at it and sometimes I'll be very conscious of like why am I doing this 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 is so pointless I don't need to be on here I do this but it's just like giving your brain something comfort yeah instead of having nothing there and then suddenly it's like something can emerge out of the murky darkness it's like hey you've been ignoring me (laughs) you're like oh yeah you have to process your feelings yeah (laughs) yeah do that (laughs) I do the same thing and it's like I go to the point sometimes it's like I there will be moments where I'm not very good at it and that's totally okay. Like I try to g- jump back into it. Try not to hate on myself for forgetting about it. Mm-hmm. But there will be days where I skip like once or two a week or something. And mm-hmm. then I'm like, and then I realize that those days I'm not as grounded feeling. I'm feeling like everywhere almost. But mm-hmm. when I do take that time to disconnect from my phone, I do process my emotions a lot more than having your phone because it's like your brain wants to be distracted for some reason, mm-hmm. some comfort um, yeah. yeah exactly yeah. like you just want to be comfortable and sitting there is uncomfortable right it for some reason when you just sit on the couch just yeah <laughs> like what am i doing right now yeah <laughs> like it's weird yeah i mean that's like a a mental uncomfortable and then they also say and you said you work out and that's a physical stress or uncomfortable and that's the thing if you're going through stress 
from a job or it's like emotional stress, a different type of stress, like physical activity Mm -hmm. will help with that, which I think is so weird. Yeah, it is. It is weird. (laughs) How like the different stress, I I would say like the uncomfortableness is like when you get used to it, Mm -hmm. things become a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And I've realized that with a lot of things because I was uncomfortable about this and just, and like in my head about it and I'm just mm-hmm. like stop worrying about it it's just talking like you, right. you can be uncomfortable other places like you can be uncomfortable here and even I'm not uncomfortable I'm comfortable nice. <laughs> yes. but <laughs> like when I'm working out usually I start running like mm-hmm. that's my first go-to and I'm just sitting there and I'm just basically screaming at myself to be like <laughs> you have to make it there like, go to that mailbox <laughs> go to that mailbox you cannot stop if you stop right now then you can't reach your goals. Yeah. Like kind of been, like That's that like pressure exactly that I put myself. That's like through my head when I'm running. That's so funny. <laughs> and I'm like, I, you have to make it here. And like, that's kind of, and I'm like, I'm uncomfortable. Why am I so uncomfortable? And I'm like, just, I'm like constantly fighting my brain to tell, like, to tell me to stop. And I'm like, why yeah. are you telling yourself stop? Just keep going. Your body can physically do this. Right. That's what's weird is if, if you were running away from a zombie, you could run for like 20 <laughs> miles. You'd be okay. Like if it was life or death, you could do it. Sure. But when it's like, I'm just going to go for a little run, like you can start. And we, when we lived in the mm-hmm. same neighborhood you live in, um, I I'm, ran that same place you that you did. told me yes. yeah, like that through that neighborhood yes. at night. It was pretty nice. That to me was the, it was like therapy because especially at nighttime where mm. you, and I did not run with headphones. That's the thing. Do you do you run I with? I definitely run with headphones. You do? I, I, need, I need to have something. Yes. Now I do mm-hmm. because I live in a, a different neighborhood. But at the time, because it was this, like, I would be thinking of, like, full movie plots in my head mm-hmm. that I was just making up. Really and, like, I would be going through all of these really creative things because, and they say when you're when you're doing something, so for instance, puzzling or playing some sort of a game where it mm-hmm. doesn't require a lot of thinking, it just requires like just doing, so strategy. like working out. Yeah. Kind well, of. strategy, I feel like you would, you would have to think no, almost like right. more yeah, mindless yeah. things. Mm-hmm. They say you can be listening to a book on audio or a podcast, or there can be something else filtering in. And because your hands are busy, you're retaining the information more. Mm-hmm. So when I'm running, then I can think through all the problems from the day, or I can, mm-hmm. if there's a movie idea that I'm like, I really want to see if this would be worth doing. I play out the whole movie and like think of new things to bring back to the table. But that, that's really cool. That's the thing is, is if you, if if you can find something in your life now, I'm not telling people like go out and run in this specific neighborhood and think about these things. Like it probably won't work for you specifically, but if you can find something that's like, this is me, this is what works for me, then that's great. Keep doing it. Yeah. hundred percent. So what are some of the things? So sitting alone for about 20 minutes, Mm -hmm. just untethered running, running is definitely the thing that helps me a lot like if i'm feeling anxious or if i'm feeling bad i'm like time to run like nice. i literally just put my shoes on and i'm like okay i gotta go like and i just start running and then literally 10 minutes and i'm like wow i feel so much better about life right now yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> it's that's, magic that's what's so funny you, you do it for a second oh, i know and everything gets better and you're like mm-hmm. why didn't i do this before like yeah i was moping around kind of laying like dealing with things and like I'm out here and now I just feel so much better. So now I just try to keep a routine Mm -hmm. where it's like, I try not to make myself feel bad, but sometimes feeling bad is a good thing too, which is dumb because (laughs) it's like you need, you need to have everything. You can't just always be running that high. Like it, like your brain needs to have those up and downs. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's just a matter of not letting it spiral out of your control. Yeah. Which is just hard mental mental illness is a thing it is <laughs> yeah so if are you do you like talking about that with yeah. people i definitely like being proactive with it and voicing it because like a lot of people shut it down like i i'm not gonna say names but like experiences with other people that i've experienced like especially with parents and stuff mm-hmm. like that they don't believe that's really a thing sometimes or like just get over yourself like do right. something else like go do something because it's like I understand that thought press and like go doing something, but it's kind of like the same thing. It's like, go do something to be better at it. Right. Kind of thing. And they're like, don't do this. Just go work out. And it's like, yeah, I get it. And it makes sense. But it's like also a process. Too. Right. But because I think we get affected by things that we can easily be like, no, that doesn't affect me. But yeah, it's, exactly. it's really there. It's, it's gnawing away. A lot of things affect everybody all yeah. the time. Yeah. Well, I'm getting the signal. 
that we have done our full Coffee Talk episode. Wow, so crazy, yes. so fast. I know. I know, it goes by so quick. It does. Um, TJ said he, I mean, sorry. <laughs> you're TJ's TJ. in the chat. Hi, TJ. <laughs> hey guys, I've been texting this whole time. Um, <laughs> wow, TJ, you're doing great. <laughs> yeah, you're doing an awesome job. Um, I don't know what I did, but I did something bad. I'm trying, Uh-oh. oh, I got it back. Okay. <laughs> um, my dad said that he visited you in the NIC unit at Sarasota Memorial. Yeah. Um, when? When, when you were born. Oh, mm-hmm. that's the newborn. <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, remember that physically, but <laughs> people have told me. <laughs> I remember <laughs> that story. He showed yes, up with I a flashlight. TJ. <laughs> Sammy Bansing said that uh, if it's Blue Island Bistro in Venice, it's literally her favorite breakfast place on the planet. It is. Ooh, that's okay, exactly what it is. Okay. And then Brett said something about Zen mode on his phone, but it's not an iPhone. Somebody cares. Oh. Um, <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on, Brett. <laughs> All right. We got to get out of here. So, you okay. want to sign off? Yeah, I will. Thanks, TJ, for yeah. being here. This was a good time. It was fun. I'm so glad that you did it. Thank you. We'll, do, we'll have to do more of we'll these podcasts. We'll do more. Yes. And tune in tomorrow for Connie Kaufman. Is she coming tomorrow? Ooh. Yes. Tomorrow. Wednesday. Wednesday. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, it's going to be good. All okay. Right.